From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. What the hell is going on here? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Likas Show. This segment of the program may sound even hokey to regular listeners, but it's not. It's not a joke. And I'll tell you why it's not a joke. You know, uh, for the last 28 years, I have hosted something called uh, Orphan Thanksgiving. Where it all began with uh, three guys I worked with at a radio station in Stanton, Virginia. We all had a job. Um, I got paid 160 bucks a week. I don't think the other guys made much more than I did. And we were all far from home because, uh, may I be frank, Stanton, Virginia didn't have a lot of people who were articulate enough in the English language to go do a radio program. So they had to import us from other parts of the country. One of the guys was from Schenectady, New York. One of the guys was from Evanston, Evanston, Indiana. Evanston, Indiana? Evanston, Illinois. Evanston, Illinois. And uh, I was from New York City. There was one other guy. I forget where he was from. And we all um, had to work on Thanksgiving Day. We could not go home and be with our friends and family because we had to work at the radio station. And so we did. But I had an idea. I had no interest in giving up Thanksgiving. So my idea is that the three guys at the station and I, who could not go home, because we had to work, we would be each other's family. We would have Thanksgiving together. And what has happened is that, uh, well, on that first orphan Thanksgiving, one of us was always missing. Because one of us had to be on the air, and the other three continued with the day's events. So we were eating dinner, some of us at different times, or dessert at different times. One person had to take dessert with them because they didn't have time. They had to go and work on the air. Uh, but uh, all of us uh, got to spend a day with the others. And finally, at the end of the broadcast day, after we'd played the national anthem, we kind of spent one final hour, all four of us together, before we all went home. And um, ever since then, I have uh, continued this tradition. It started with people in radio who couldn't go home for the holiday. It continued with other people I knew who had family and friends living far away and they couldn't be with them. Sometimes it was people who had come from other countries or other states. Sometimes it was people who had disagreements with people in their families. The families were not talking to them. I knew I had friends who were gay and had been ostracized from their families. I had friends who had interracial relationships. And the family said, don't you bring her home. Don't you do that. I had a variety of people who, uh, if it were not for my event, would be sitting home having a turkey sandwich and watching It's a Wonderful Life. And eventually the crowd got up to be a pretty large crowd. And now it isn't just radio people and it isn't just orphans, as I've called them. There are all kinds of people who just yearn to have a traditional Thanksgiving. And maybe their family, for whatever reason, does not have a traditional Thanksgiving. Maybe they don't. They don't know how to cook a Thanksgiving dinner or they, they don't choose to take the time and effort. There are people who, uh, you know, are no more than one member of a couple. Maybe the parents live far away or whatever. 
for whatever reason, I have my makeshift family of anywhere from 15 to 25 people who come every year. Some have dinner. Some have dinner early or late. Some come just to have a glass of wine or come to have some dessert after dinner. Maybe a cup of coffee. Sit around the fire. Smoke cigars. Watch football. We do all of it. But unlike some of the wild stuff that we have done with limousines and listeners <laughs> uh, with alcohol and some of the wild venues where we played, cities where we had two or more hotel rooms booked, just kept moving between the rooms and all the craziness, nothing could be more chaste. Nothing could be more harmless and wholesome than my Thanksgiving. I have to do it. I continue to do it every year. When I have done this, I've heard a variety of stories from people about why they needed to come. Why they could not go home for Thanksgiving. And the stories are all over the road. And... Uh, I was always fascinated to find out, uh, you know, why people were not able to go home or why people were not able to go anywhere, had nowhere to go, why their families didn't love them, why their families had ostracized them, why their families were angry at them. You know, what did they do to cause that kind of animosity? And in many cases, they did nothing. They did nothing but refuse to follow the demands or the commands of people in the family who were going to tell them what to do. I have had uh, gay couples at my house who were told, you're, you know, if you're gay, you're not coming home for Thanksgiving. I have had straight couples who were of different races or ethnicities or religions, and the family tried to uh, arm wrestle them into, uh, you know, doing it their way. You're not gonna. You're not gonna date a Hispanic. You're not gonna date a Jew. You're not gonna date an Asian. You're not gonna do that. And when they said, "Well, yes, I am," the family would say, "Well, then you're not coming to Thanksgiving dinner. Don't don't call us." Even I myself, one time, was told by my father when I could not be home for the holidays. I was told, "No, oh, you've really put, cut the umbilical cord now, pal." And he didn't talk to me for another year and a half. So I've been there just like all these other people. Now, I, you know, every time I, I talk about this on the air, and I, I know it's going to happen again, I know uh, when I tell you about my Thanksgiving, where I make everything from scratch, I will start cooking tonight, start the preparation tonight. And tomorrow about 1 p.m., people will start arriving at my home. All I can tell you is that uh, I know that many of you hear this and... You write to me. I, I get more letters. People saying, can I come to your house for Thanksgiving? People want that. My answer to you is create your own. Create your own with people you know. It's the most rewarding thing I've ever done in my life. It's my favorite day of the year. But I know there are people listening to me right now who will not be celebrating Thanksgiving. They will not be going home to see their parents. They will not be going home to see their friends. Maybe you have to work. Maybe you live far from home. Maybe your family is from another country and they don't celebrate Thanksgiving and they don't understand it. Maybe your family is uh, some religion that doesn't believe in celebrating Thanksgiving or holidays of that ilk. Maybe your family is not talking to you. Maybe you've had a falling out with somebody. Maybe you just have to work and you can't go home this weekend. There can be any number of reasons. Every year I ask this question and we get some really heart-rending responses. So when I say it sounds like it could be hokey in the environment of the stuff we do on the program, I understand why you might think that, but I take Thanksgiving very seriously. And I know that there's people out there listening right now because they're alone. And there are people who are dreading tomorrow. 
there are people who are they're going to get a Swanson turkey dinner. Do they still make turkey dinner Swanson? I don't even know. Or Marie Callender's turkey dinner. They do make frozen dinners, by the way. I know there are people out there who are going to uh, get a turkey sandwich at a deli. Or they're going to make the, the, the teeniest, tiniest butterball turkey breast. Have you ever done that on Thanksgiving? I've done it, by the way. You know, you want to feel like it's Thanksgiving, so you get some stovetop stuffing and you get yourself the little teeny tiny turkey breast from like Butterball and you put that in the oven. Try to recreate the feeling of Thanksgiving. How many of you have done that? I know many of you have. And I know many people listening today probably will do that. So if you can't go home for Thanksgiving, if you can't go anywhere for Thanksgiving, I want to hear your story. I want to find out why you have no place to go. Why will you be by yourself? Did your family turn you out? Your friends, for some reason, were falling out with you? I want to know the story. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's the Tom Likas Likas Show. Show. The Tom Likas Show, 1-800-5800-TOM. Why can you not go home for Thanksgiving? Why not? Steve in Parkland, Oregon, home of the other YMA. By the way, 503 is not the area code in Parkland. That is the median wage of the average female. Hello? Hi, Tom. Hey, it's Steve. Um, Yeah, well, see, here's my deal. I, you know, my father is a a manic depressive and my mother's pretty much wasted her whole life trying to fix him and about 19 years ago he gave me a bloody nose and i left and she sided with him and made up this big story that she didn't want him to get help and so i told her you know when you're ready to admit that this relationship's bad and you need to get out of it you give me a call but other than that uh i don't want to play this game anymore and i have done holidays pretty much alone since and christmas is my birthday and i'm used to just doing it alone did you ever consider the possibility of trying to create an event with people you know and like not until i listened to you today i worked with handicapped folks until recently and i usually just work the holidays and whatever handicapped folks didn't have any family i just uh try to go out to dinner with them at work and be about the extent of it But I do like your idea, Tom, and I may give it a try at some point. It's the best thing I ever did in my life. Yeah, I appreciate it. Like I said, Christmas is my birthday, too, so maybe I'll try something like that. Well, good luck, Steve. Let me know how you make out. I appreciate the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Rich on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Rich. How are you doing, Tom? I'm okay. Yeah, hey, uh, <laughs> mine's a little different. Uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm disabled. I have a, a spinal cord uh, condition that uh, causes me to do things that uh, aren't. It's I don't want to say Tourette's, but it's I move a lot, and uh, bathroom problems are are a key. And uh, so my my family kind of told me a couple years ago was uh, it'd just probably be better if you know they brought something over uh, later. So thinking they're helping me. Uh, my and my wife left uh, <laughs> a couple years. I could be a country song, I guess. But uh, <laughs> also, I was part of a church group, and uh, that was kind of where I tied everything that I had into. Um, you know, my life thought that was the way to go. Uh, I I know your your uh, I know your beliefs uh, too, and and uh, you know, I just uh, it all fell apart. This the, this pastor or this guy that was supposed to be running this thing basically did something that was uh, as carnal as you can be and uh this whole thing just fell apart and and i got pulled into it uh as being potentially somebody that was part of this uh problem and it just got from bad to worse to the point now uh, i got two dogs and uh and we're just trying to figure out what kind of kibble this year <laughs> wow uh, i started 
started crying when you guys you started talking about it. I feel weird because <laughs> hearing you talk like that, I'm going, yeah, you know, if I had some friends, I, I really would do that. I, I kind of, everything's been abandoned. You know, I'm, I'm at zero at 40, you know, and uh, maybe that's a good thing, you know. Uh, I don't work anymore. Uh, I had, had a, a year, a 23-year career at an aerospace company. Uh, good, good job. And uh, quit that job to go work at this church <laughs> and it just fell apart i don't know man it just it got some bad work wow yeah oh boy that's awesome you do that for people and i think more people should do what you do you know for people i think that's awesome well i uh, by the way i i'm not going to pretend i do it as much for myself as i do for everybody else i believe it yeah good for the soul it's it's the most enjoyable day of the year for me yeah well, thanks for your time, brother. Have a great holiday, if you can. Wow. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Jay on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. What's going on, man? Not much. Happy holidays to you, man. And the same to you. Uh, what's going on with my situation, man, is, is really messed up. Uh, I'm African-American. Uh, my girlfriend, long-time girlfriend, is white. And my folks don't want her around. What? Yeah, not on Thanksgiving, not on, not ever. You know what I mean? So it's like, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty messed up, man, you know? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. And so do they just say, don't, don't, don't you dare come home? Well, yeah, I mean, they made it clear. It's not, don't you dare come home. It's don't bring her, you know, and I bring her and my aunt's giving her attitude and it's just, it's, it's, it's just all messed up, man. Oh, that sucks. Big time. Big time. Hey, I had a question for you though, Tom. Yeah. I just, I just thought about it. Uh, I, I realize you're an atheist. I was just wondering what, what is the thank, the, uh, significance of Thanksgiving to you? Or who are you giving thanks to? I'm not giving thanks to anyone. Uh, what I'm doing is, uh, uh, celebrating my friends. Um, I, uh, in some cases giving people things they would not have otherwise. It's one of the ways I give back to other people I know. So just kind of being thankful with each other, you know? Well, that's good enough. I hear you. I hear you talking, man. Can I get out of here with a uh, with a Kobe style and a JFK senior? You certainly can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Oh. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Eli on the Tom Likas show. Hey Tom, how's hey. it going? It's going great. All right. Hey, uh, I just wanted to add. Um, you know, my parents are Jehovah's Witnesses, and so we've never really had you know Thanksgiving or anything like that. Um, so the last you know, I've been out of the religion for the past maybe ten years. I'm twenty five, and. Uh, so I've been really trying to, you know, sneak out of the house and celebrate with, like, my girlfriends and stuff like that. So this year, uh, I don't got, have a girlfriend, so so now um, a, but me and a buddy of mine um, got together, and we're going to, you know, get something going. I'm a graduate from culinary school, so we're just going to get something going and, and, you know, have things like that. Wow. Well, that's good anyway. So you, you found a way around it. Oh, yeah, yeah, I found my way around it. You know, the past years, you know, I've just been hanging out with girlfriends and their family and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, this year it's different, and uh, we're just, uh, me and the buddy got together, and we're just going to do it up. Uh, it sounds good to me. And, by the way, he makes a very interesting uh, point that I wanted to make, and that is never give up anything because you're alone. I must make that clear to you. As someone who's lived alone for several years now, do not let the fact that you're alone cause you to miss Thanksgiving, Christmas, going to a movie, eating in a restaurant. Do whatever you want to do. Do it. Do it. Do not let the fact that some people don't approve of you or some people don't like you 
or some people are just nuts, do not let that get in the way of you having a life and enjoying these things about your life. You've got only one life. You should be having Thanksgiving dinner tomorrow. I don't care how you do it. You should be doing it. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Are you in one of those situations where you cannot see your family or friends for Thanksgiving? They won't see you. They don't want you around. You can't go home for Thanksgiving. Why not? Come on. Tom like this. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the program. We appreciate it. 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number. You can't go home for Thanksgiving. Why not? Let's say hello here to Amen. Is that Amen? Amen. You got it right, Tom. Amen. Hello, Tom. Hello, Amen. How are you, buddy? Doing okay. It's great to hear you. I'm actually excited to be in traffic listening to you. Cool. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, family lives in Texas. I'm not going this year because I don't have the disposable income to make it out there this year. So you want to be there and they want to see you? Uh, they'd like to see me, but to, to me it's not that big of a deal. I, the boys and I are getting together for a dinner tomorrow, and I, I think that's good enough. Are you having a dinner or are you just going to be boozing? We're going to be having dinner and barbecue and boozing, for sure. Barbecue? Are you barbecuing a turkey? Uh, probably not a turkey. That's a bit complicated to cook. But we're probably <laughs> going to do some shish, some shish kebab and some, some fish. Oh, boy. Now, d is your family not from this country? They're not from this country, no. So Thanksgiving's not really a tradition for you? Uh, it has been for the past eight years since we came to America, but um, not a not a... A strong point in our culture, if you will. Right. Yeah. I understand. Right on, Tom. I appreciate your uh, time there. Thank you. Thank you for that. I appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here's Ron on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. Yes. Well, um, my story is, is I'm, uh, I'm like a, uh, my mom's second marriage honeymoon accident. And I have older brothers and sisters about 15, 16 years older. And they, and my parents had me when they were in their 40s. And any, anyways, they, uh, sort of passed away. I've been parentless since, uh, 38. And I'm in my mid 40s right now. So basically, I'm sort of alienated in my family. I mean, they include me every Thanksgiving and Christmas dinner and maybe, you know, maybe a birthday now and then. And they're big on entertainment, and they bring friends over and stuff. And when we go over there, I have a girlfriend, um, been married once, won't do it again. And uh, we just go there, and we end up just talking to each other. So we can just do that at home. So they say hi, and they're off, you know, mingling with everybody else. And we don't even know their friends, so we try to, you know, talk to them and everything. But it just it ends up really short, and so we... <laughs> My girlfriend and I, we just talk to each other there. So we're just going to spend Thanksgiving together with ourselves, and uh, we're going over our my girlfriend's, uh, you know, friend's house afterwards, and that's it. Wow. Wow. And, now, and no, no, go ahead. I moved up to uh, Vancouver, or actually Portland, Oregon, from L.A. I'm from the South Bay Area, and, uh, and they've lived here since the mid-'80s. And so I came up here just to get away from L.A. back in the early 90s, and uh, they never come and see me. And I'm like 20 minutes away. They've never seen my house, so I just keep going to their house. So, so for them, you don't like you don't count. I don't what? You don't count. Like you're not part of the family. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, they treat me like I'm nothing. In fact, my sister's daughter just got married. I have two older sisters right now, and my uh, the second one is the entertainer one. The one who entertains every everyone, and her daughter just had a uh, a wedding, and then they had all these tables where my son went to go sit down at, and my oldest sister said, 
this table's for the family. And so we had to go sit with the rest of the guests. And I'm like, my girlfriend's going, geez, what's the deal here? Wow. That's pretty outrageous. You know, the last uh, 27 years, um, I haven't had any anybody related to me even a little bit. Like, like at least uh, you, have, you have one of the same parents as a lot of these people. Um, this year, for the first time, I have uh, blood relatives coming. It's never happened in 27 years. Yeah, what with the families here in America? They tend to be like that. It's amazing. I don't know what that's all about. I, I don't get it. Why is that so important? Yeah. What makes you, you know, is it, you have to be completely successful or have something completely gone for you to, to get their attention. It's like, it's like, who are they? You know, yeah. they're, they're on the same level. See, that's the kind of story I've heard of my own Thanksgiving from people. Um, reasons they can't go home for Thanksgiving. And that, that's an outrageous, outrageous reason and an outrageous way to treat somebody. Yeah. Fam- according to my so-called family, friends come first, family second. <laughs> Amazing story, Ron. I'm sorry to hear that. I thank you for telling it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Brett on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Brett. How you doing today, buddy? Doing great. Happy holidays to you. And the same to you. Um, I got a little story for you. My mom, I'm 23 years old. My mom is a control freak. She has been since I was a little kid. And any time that I would come over to her house for Thanksgiving or Christmas, it's, oh, you gotta come over to my house and help me prepare the turkey. You gotta, you gotta do this. You gotta prepare the yams. You gotta boil the potatoes. And, you know, if I'm being invited over to somebody's house, you know, I would think that I would be able just to sit there and enjoy the festivities. I would think. That's what I would think too. So this year, she extended the invitation to me. And I declined it. And so now me and my boys, I got all my friends together. We got a bunch of ladies coming over. And we're going to deep fry a turkey. And we're going to sit around, watch it boil, and drink beer. <laughs> wow. Now, do you ever wish you could just have a traditional Thanksgiving? Um, you know what? I'm over the whole traditional Thanksgiving. Why do I need to force myself to be with people that, you know, that oh, don't I... really... I don't think you should. That's a, I never did. I never forced myself to be with anybody I didn't want to be with on Thanksgiving. Uh, everybody who comes to my house is somebody I want to see, and it's somebody who wants to be there. Nobody, uh, you know, my dad used to use this phrase, you better put in an appearance. Nobody puts in an appearance. Everybody is there is there because they want to be. Exactly. I have had people come to me and say to me, Oh, you know, this year I have a girlfriend and we're going to get married and uh, I don't think we're going to be able to make your Thanksgiving because she wants to have Thanksgiving. And I tell them, that's what this is for. You, were, I was here for the years. You didn't have a girlfriend. You didn't have a home. You didn't have anybody to go with. Now you have to make your own memories. So go do it. That's, that's what all my friends that are coming over. They're coming over because they want to be and they're people that I want to have over there. You know, surround myself with people that want to enjoy my company, and I want to enjoy theirs. Good for you, Brett. Thank you so much, Tom. Can you take me out Lacey Peterson style? I certainly can. Emmer. Hey. Emmer. Emmer, make you a few friends. Even though it's tasteless. And it is. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Brian on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, hey, Tom. How's it going? Great. All right. Well, I'm not doing so great, Tom. What's wrong? Well, first of all, I'd like to say thank you. I listen to the show, and, I mean, it's amazing. I, I listen to you all the time, and you've helped me out a lot. I'm a huge one-on-one follower. Good. All right. Well, first of all, my problem is my ex-girlfriend won't let me see my kids for Thanksgiving. How many kids do you have? I have two kids. You're 22. Yep, 22 years old. Why do kids. you have two kids? Um. Now how about using a condom? Uh, I probably should have thought about that. Chase the wheel. Yeah, how about, all right, you probably made the mistake it. once. Why did you do it twice? I don't know, Tom. I guess I'm just a screw up. Yeah, and why do you have a girlfriend? 
cause alcohol. That doesn't mean you have a girlfriend. You're 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 a crank call. Hear your buddy in the background there. But it's been very nice knowing you. Okay. You're out. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's our telephone number. Alma on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi Tom. First Hi. time, long time. Thank you. Um, I can't go home. At, I'm sort of a black sheep of the family. I'm not exactly sure why. I've lost touch with my dad. And by the my way, by the way, I'll bet, I'll bet, away. I'll bet you do know why. Maybe no one's ever confirmed it to you, but I'll bet you've got a pretty good idea why you're the black sheep of the family. Probably because I'm the only one with a college degree. Well, that you know what? There are some families who are like that. They say I'm stuck up and a bunch of other things, but I just think I'm successful more so than they are, and I think that really bothers them. But I've never been welcome to Christmas or Thanksgiving with them. And it just, it used to really bother me at first. Now it's kind of like lonely. <laughs> what were you supposed to do as far as they were concerned? Um, I guess stay married. I was in an abusive marriage before. And, and, they, and they thought that was the right place for you to be? Right. I'm the only one in my family who's divorced also. I see. Uh, are there anyone else? Uh, are there any other people being abused and staying in the marriage? My mother. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. So I have a cousin living with me also, and my my aunt just came to pick her up, and she said she would try to come visit me on Friday. <laughs> oh, isn't that nice? Yeah. Don't waste your time. Don't yeah, waste I, well, your time. I, I'm doing her a favor by letting my cousin live in my house rent free. So that she can go to school. So. And uh, she didn't invite you over for Thanksgiving? Correct. So I, I just told her, you know what, it's okay, I need to work on Friday anyway. <laughs> but but that's really not what you like to be doing. Um, It's actually not even true. I would just rather be alone than be somewhere where I'm not welcome. And why do you think that uh, she did not invite you for Thanksgiving? I'm actually not even sure. I'm really confused on that one. Furniture shortage? Turkey <laughs> shortage? She probably didn't have enough turkey or mashed potatoes. I'm not really sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> so how many years have you been going like this? I'd say a good 10 years. 10 years? Is that when yeah. you got divorced? Uh, I actually got divorced. Yeah. Yeah, it was around that time. Right. And had you stayed with an abusive husband, you'd still be going to Thanksgiving dinner today? <laughs> Probably so. Wow. The price is too high. In Hispanic families, I think it is. That's pretty outrageous, and it's not the first time I've heard a story like that. And uh, if you add in the fact there's uh, a lot of women who, uh, who take a lot of uh, crap for going to college... <laughs> In Hispanic <laughs> families, that's common. Now, there, yeah. there. By the way, there are boys who take crap for going to college. I get a lot of that because I don't have kids, and I'm 36. Oh, there's another reason they don't want you over. Is that it? I think that might be another reason. That sucks. So, if the last 10 years, did you have a boyfriend or anybody take you uh, to, to a Thanksgiving dinner or make dinner for you or with you or? Oh, yeah. There's been a few relationships along the way. Did you enjoy that? I, it, I think it depends on the individual that I happen to be with at the time. I enjoyed some more than others. Um, this year, I'm involved with somebody who is going to Las Vegas with his mother. What? <laughs> and I'm staying home. <laughs> I think that's uh, one foot out the door for you. Oh, I think it's been out the door for a long time. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. How do you pick these guys? <laughs> I think they're the last one standing. At my age, there's not a huge selection of single men. Well, you know how Southern California is, darling. I mean, uh, everybody who's uh, married today is single in uh, two to five years. <laughs> I'd prefer to date a man with no kids, though. Well, I'm not saying they have kids. I'm just saying they've been, if they've been married, that look at me, I've been married, divorced four times. Well, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I'm probably just going to stay home and 
do some home repair this Thanksgiving. Home repairs? <laughs> yeah. Home repairs. And will you also watch It's a Wonderful Life while you're doing home repairs? <laughs> Not likely. No? Have you ever seen that movie? I have. <laughs> really? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. So you've, you've had enough... I've just had enough of the Thanksgiving season. It's, I'm just waiting for it to come and be gone. Unless you had someone to have Thanksgiving dinner with, and then you would love it. <laughs> I think you're you're probably true. Yeah, I know. you're right. Yeah, I know. Oh well. Well, Alma, I I feel your pain. I understand. I've heard your story many many times. So <laughs> I don't know if that makes you feel any better or any worse, but. Uh, there's a lot of people who are dealing with what you're dealing with right now. <laughs> well, thank you for listening, Tom. Can you take me out old school? Yes, yes, of course I can. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Like is one eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. The Tom Likes Show. I like a show from Hollywood. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. So you can't go home for Thanksgiving. Why not? Brian on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey Tom, how's it going? Great. Hey, uh the reason I can't go home is uh when I was growing up, my mom used to always tell me you know, you should always get, like, an Asian woman to clean up after you because you're such, you know, you leave such a mess around. What? People are still saying stuff like that? I know, man. That's how my mom is. But so I got to, uh, been dating this girl, Davina, this Asian girl, uh, for about two years now. I'm 26. She's 24. And my mom and my dad have told me until I am through dating her, I am not welcome in their home. Really? Dead serious. That's outrageous. Yeah. You know what that would mean? I would never come home again. That would be it. I don't know. I mean, my sister, like everyone else in the family, is totally cool with it, you know, but my mom and my dad, I don't know what it is, man. I just say absolutely no to any, any ultimatum ever. No. Yeah. I don't, uh, I don't get it. I mean, Davina's parents, you know... Their parents, cool, you know, obviously having me around, no problem. They love me. It's all good. But my parents, nothing to do with her at all. Wow. So what have you done? <laughs> well, needless to say, we don't have a very good relationship. I basically cut all ties with them. I mean, I speak to my brother and my sister, but my parents, we, uh, we haven't... We we talk occasionally just to kind of, how's it going, you know, how's your job, da-da-da. But other than that, no relationship. I mean, and we used to talk a lot. Unbelievable. Yeah. So, so I, 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 for me, I just say, that's it. It's done. Nobody yeah, gives I, me an ultimatum. Nobody. Yeah. So after, after that, it's... Uh, I mean, I, I really like her. I mean, I'll, obviously, I follow by your rules. I'm, I'm never going to get married, but uh, she's a great girl. Well, I understand. Yeah, so time will tell, I guess, huh? I, it's just an outrage. It's an outrage, and I would just say no. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Juan on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Juan. Hey, um... Well, I'm calling in because, you know, I can't go home for uh, Thanksgiving because my parents are Jehovah's Witnesses. And obviously they don't celebrate Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner or anything like that. Um, and on top of that, uh, if, you are, uh, if you ever leave the Jehovah's Witnesses uh, religion, you are excommunicated and they shun you completely. They don't talk to you at all. I've heard about this. Yeah. And I left uh, maybe about two to three years ago. Um, I'm now an atheist. Um, now I'm a reasoning individual. <laughs> yeah, I understand. <laughs> but um, if you, but 
Like, for Jehovah's Witnesses have this thing where if you don't think the same way they do, they'll just cut you off completely, whether you're family or, or not. So has your family done that? Yeah. They have, they, they don't talk to me. Um, I have a lot of other friends that, um, also were ex Jehovah's, or that are ex Jehovah's Witnesses, and same thing, their families, immediate fam families, won't talk to them. So outrageous. I know. Really pisses me off. I hear you. you know, I'm, I'm glad you do the Ask the Atheist. Um, I wish you would do it more often. That way more people would realize uh, how much damage religion can cause to families. Well, in this case, you don't even have the option of saying, you know, I'm a live and let live kind of guy. You guys can observe your religion if you want, and I'll observe mine. And what's wrong with that? That's the way it should be. I mean, if you want to do your religion, go ahead. I, I don't ever talk too bad. Like, I, I don't tell them to their face that, they, that they're wrong. I let them do whatever they want to do, but that's not the way they are with me. Outrageous. Well, uh, Juan, thank you for that. I appreciate the call. That really sucks. I got time for one more here. Josiah on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Josiah. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great. <laughs> yeah, I, I just thought I'd let you know I'm not doing anything uh, this Thanksgiving. I'm going home right now, and I'll be uh, with the two animals, and that's about it. Why? Well... Parents and family are too far away, and since I did a lot of time in the Marine Corps, I basically settled down here in Southern California. Uh, a lot of my friends that I was in the Marine Corps with, they got out after Iraq, or after the first wave, and a lot of them live on the East Coast, Texas. And then when I became a police officer, I lost about, I'd say about 70% of my friends because they wanted nothing to do with uh, the law because, you know, they like to sit around and smoke the devil's lettuce per se and they don't want me to see that and they don't want to deal with it unbelievable our email address is my name it's tom at blowmeuptom.com the tom like show